Welcome back. We have an update now to a case we've been following here on BC One. Nearly four years ago, Solomon Fakiri was discovered dead on the floor of a segregation cell at a correctional center in Ontario. Fakiri lived with schizophrenia. His family has long been calling for a thorough investigation into the circumstances surrounding his death and for justice. But it appears the latter will not be happening. A second investigation into Fakiri's death has now concluded after reaching the same conclusion as the first. No evidence to substantiate criminal charges against any of the guards who restrained and allegedly beat Fakiri prior to his death. Joining us now is Solomon's brother, Yusuf Fakiri, who's long been an advocate for a thorough investigation into his brother's death. Yusuf, you joined us a few months ago on BC One to speak about this case. Thank you for being with us once again. Thank you so much for having me, Sarah. First off, let's talk about these new developments today. The OPP's investigation has now concluded with no charges recommended. Your thoughts and feelings, I'm sure you have a lot of them. Shock, mm -hmm. anger, pain, um, devastation. Um, and this is my family's comments as well. Like, And you know, Sarah, you mentioned a thorough investigation. I don't know if this is called the thorough investigation when you have effectively the uh, you know when they have more information with respect to the case they have an eyewitness they have they have more more evidence yet the OPP uh, still they call this a thorough investigation even though you, they use the same local crown attorney that was involved in the first investigation so that puts into question the very independence of this investigation that's very problematic on that note, and on the topic of accountability, Ontario Provincial Police, who we know picked up this investigation, uh, are not laying charges against any of the six or more guards allegedly involved in your brother's death. But there were 50 signs of blunt impact trauma. How is the OPP accounting for that? And what's the explanation they provided to your family? Thank you so much for that question. So, Sarah, we have 50 bruises on Suleiman's body. We have both his legs and his hands that were tied. He was pepper sprayed twice. And the OPP called the eyewitness, Mr. John Thibault, a credible witness. So these facts are, they're not disputed. These are facts that everybody agrees on. They make the statement that they could not press charges against any of the guards because they're not able to identify who gave the fatal blow, even though they know who gave the punches, who put his knee to his neck. So what so what they're effectively saying, Sarah, is that if you want to commit murder or to kill someone, do it in a group. So they're not able to give us an explanation. They're saying because we weren't able to identify the fatal blow, we're not able to press charges. I mean, this is a preposterous, an absurd statement. And it's that it stands in a slapping in the face of our Canadian justice system. That's the that's the explanation they gave to my family, Sarah. Does the outcome of this investigation by the OPP, as you understand it, does it jive with the findings of the coroner's report? And can you share with us anything you feel comfortable uh, sharing with us about the coroner's report into your brother's death? Absolutely. The coroner's report gave a very thorough, did a very exhaustive analysis on the detailed part. And we've already talked about those details, Sarah. 50 bruises, legs and hands tied, pepper sprayed, was in segregation. Those are facts at hand. And the OPP also is, uh, said that the guards did beat him. It's whether it's in terms of the, um, the, 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 the they don't know who to, um, who identified who, who, who gave the fatal blow. But the problem here, Sarah, it seems like there's different standards for law enforcement versus the rest of ca other Canadians. Suleiman suffered from a severe mental illness. So if someone like myself or someone else goes out there and does something horrible to someone, if we commit a crime, we will be charged. But it's as if like the guards and law enforcement are given a different standard. And that's a problematic. And that, that in itself puts into integrity our very notion of our Canadian justice system. And what, what's disappointing for me more than anything is that my brother, my family, my sister, we put faith in the justice system. We put faith in a very difficult position that we're in in our grief in the last almost four years. Yet they come back to us and they effectively say that we can't press charges because your brother's life is effectively cheap. Your brother suffered from mental illness. Like this is this is the problem. This is a fundamental problem. It's as if people who have mental illness, their lives do, do not have the same value as other individuals. And that's a problem in our nation. As you understand it, uh, did the witness and the subject officers cooperate with the OPP in their investigation? What I understand, Sarah, and I'll repeat this again, 
they spoke they they spoke with the eyewitness they told us they spoke to the eyewitness and they said that the eyewitness was credible this is what the opp said they, they said the eyewitness was credible what they also said is that and what's come out too remember a couple of the guards have already been fired and it's come out that most of the guards that were involved in Suleiman's beating death um, did not follow appropriate Ministry of the Solicitor General protocols. So these are the facts at hand for you, Sarah. So I'm a bit confused as to how they're not able to press any charges, let alone homicide. I mean, what about assault? What about aggravated assault? The OPP, we know, picked up this investigation here in B.C. We have the IIO, the Independent Investigations Office, that investigates uh, any cases that involve harm or injury or death uh, in any incidents where police officers are involved. Do you think the OPP, the Ontario Provincial Police, investigating essentially themselves in this case uh, is enough? Or would you like to see an independent investigation into this? Once again, Sarah, we're going to ask for an independent investigation because Canadians are counting on us. The OPP failed the Fikiri family. The OPP failed Canadians at large. The OPP failed every single human being in our nation that's suffering from mental illness at large. Because what they effectively said is that we cannot, we cannot do the right thing. They did not have the courage to do the right thing because essentially people with mental illness, it's a different standard for them. And that's a problem. That's why this case isn't just about Suleiman Fakiri or the Fakiri family. This case involves every single Canadian suffering from mental illness. And we have a problem with that investigation itself. There's questions of independence and questions of integrity. And on that note, as you just mentioned, and you have long mentioned that you and your family are not alone in this, that there are other Canadian families going through similar situations as you are and feeling the pain that you and your family are feeling. What reforms would you like to see in terms of greater change, both provincially and federally? First and foremost, Sarah, there needs to be accountability and transparency for anyone who suffers from mental illness within the justice system. Second of all, people with mental illness should not be given to their families and body bags. They should be... They should be in hospitals. They should be taken care of by social workers, by psychiatrists, by doctors, individuals that have the appropriate tools. The justice system needs to transform to better respect and dignify Canadians that are suffering from mental illness. And right now, as a nation, we have a fundamental problem within that concept. And if we don't change it, there will be more Suleiman Fakiris and there will be more Ashley Smiths and Tony Dews. And, the re and that's ultimately, Sarah, the main reason and the only reason my family continues to fight is to give these people a voice and to be their voice because we want to build that society where people with mental illness are able to thrive with dignity, humility, because that's their right. They don't choose to have an illness. And it's very tragic when the system in itself criminalizes them and when the system in itself takes their life. They're already suffering enough to begin with. Where is the compassion? Where is the dignity? Where is the honor? Where does your family go from here, Yusuf? And are you optimistic that, you know, someday there will be an outcome to some investigation that provides your family some measure of closure in your brother's death? Let me be very clear, Sarah. This fight is far from over. We are determined more than ever to continue our fight. There's the inquest coming. The truth will come out. Our, uh, Canadians will see the truth. The OPP already knows the truth. The, guard know, the guards know what they did. The Ministry of the Government of Ontario knows what happened. For us, at the end of the day, we'll continue to ask for that independent investigation. And we will get justice for Suleiman because Canadians are counting on us. We have to use our pain and suffering to inspire individuals that don't have that voice. And that's why this fight is so important, so critical. OPP might have failed in doing the right thing, but Canadians across the nation stand behind my family and inspire us and have told us to continue to fight. And that's where we get our energy and that's where we get our inspiration from. What would justice for your brother look like? For Suleiman, you know, Sarah, he's gone. He's never coming back. And a part of us dies every day with Suleiman. He was a gifted man. What the first and foremost for us, what justice would look like is for the guards to be held accountable for what they did because they'll do this to someone else. They'll do this to someone else. And we need to stop that. And we need those guards to be criminally, cr criminally charged for what they did. And that's what we're going to continue to seek, because that's the conviction and the perspective and the passion that we have to do to build that better society. Because what the OPP has effectively said to the family, because we do not know who gave the fatal blow, we cannot press charges, which is sending the very dangerous 
unprecedented legal message that uh, if you want to commit murder, do it in a group. Yusuf Fakiri joining us from Ontario. Yusuf, thank you as always for shedding light on your brother's story and your family's struggles with us. Thank you so much, Sarah, for your time.